So let's get it started because I don't know if all of you uh, know this person, this avatar that I have on my side, uh, but um, I met him uh, years ago because he became quite popular or doing something really, really crazy at that, at that moment. It doesn't seem so crazy anymore because we are seeing, <laughs> every day we're seeing news about people spending large amounts of money on digital, uh, on digital assets, right? But back when you started, back when you, when you, when you did this crazy thing that you're gonna explain to us now, it was, uh, it was um, not, not normal. No. So what happened, John? How, how did you, uh, transition uh, to virtual reality and, and how was that transition to you in the days okay well I came to Los Angeles to make movies when I was in my early 20s and writing screenplays I was always broke and so I was so broke I could never afford to go out but I had a computer and so I used to play RPGs, and this is in the early 90s through to the mid 90s. I played first MUDs, and the first time I played a MUD, uh, was, it was called Tele Arena, and I was connected to a BBS system, and it was a text-based MUD, and it said, you know, if you click north, you entered a room, and then it said, then it said, somebody entered from the west. And this guy goes high. It's like, holy oh, shit, this is unbelievable. And as I was playing this game and running up a big phone bill to New York City, because that's where the BBS was, and in America, the long distance charges were enormous back then. This is 94. Um, I, you know, the, the cost of playing was very high. And the game that I was playing involved, you know, killing monsters and getting gold pieces. And I started to think, what if this gold was real? What if there were a lot of people inside this mud, this world, and every time they died, they had real cash to come back and underwrote the price of the gold. Then I could make enough money playing this to pay my phone bill. And I realized because the internet was just, it was just, there were rumors of the internet. I was like, when the internet comes, this is going to be a billion dollar opportunity. So I uh, actually made a game that was sold to a game co a company called Engage Online, and I wrote a movie about a character called Never Die, who was the world champion, the guy that found the, the most valuable treasures in virtual worlds. And then in 2000, I couldn't get the movie made at the time, in 2000, I, I heard about a game in Sweden called Entropy Universe that was building um, a uh, massive multiplayer science fiction world with a real cash economy built in. So every single item would have a real cash value. Effectively, they were NFTs. They were, they are NFTs, but they were not on a blockchain. But there was land, there was the, the ab ability to build your avatar skills in this world and buy and sell virtual goods. And in the first year, because I quickly got all the best equipment, suddenly my avatar was richer than me. I actually, my avatar's equipment was worth about $20,000 and I was struggling to pay the rent. I, um, I actually was making a movie at the time in Miami about the DJ scene and uh, I realized, wow, I could make more money. I could actually, because I wasn't, I was spending so much time making my movie, I wasn't able to utilize the value of my virtual goods that were really the best and very valuable. But I thought, wow, if I could bring DJs into this virtual world, then I could provide entertainment, and perhaps I could create a sort of a tax revenue from people playing inside my, on my land. And so I bought a asteroid um, in an auction for $100,000, which was the world record at the time, and uh, created headline news. 
um, because it was the one of the first ever uh, large scale transactions for virtual real estate. There was also a business model that I had uh, the, the, for this virtual real estate where you were able to collect taxes on the activity of the avatars on your land. So I started running and hosting events, world championship esports, um, bringing in DJs, top DJs, having dance parties, very much like this, but we we're all dancing and then going outside and killing monsters in between our conversations. Um, we were chatting, um, but that's really how it began. And, and then I spent the next few years trying to elevate it and elevate it and i eventually did deals with michael jackson i which we we built the world but fortunately it fell apart <laughs> before it ever got launched but that was a big deal um to build michael jackson's virtual world uh, i brought king kong into entropy universe um the thing so i created virtual movie experiences um and uh during this time I met people from all over the world that were pioneering virtual reality at the same time as me. And these people from all walks of life, I was pretty much the showman. So I was loved and hated, right? Because I didn't really reflect the values of everybody. But during this time, I really, on a very deep fundamental level, understood the challenges and the issues that different people um, face in virtual reality, the value of their avatar, the value of their items, the importance of their autonomy, uh, the, the challenges even that the developers face in maintaining the value. I, they, they, there were so many, many, many issues that came up and so many human interactions. So even though we were at our desktops, it was, we were projecting ourselves so deeply into the world, very much like we are here. So that when it, when, when it became 2014, 2015, and we were, I was really trying to figure out, well, how can we connect this virtual world to everything else that's going on virtually? And, and how, do we, how do we create a, a, a metaverse where there's, value for everybody and how do we protect people's rights at that point i decided and i was even having issues with with the management inside the virtual universe and and seeing conflicts with 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 the economics of, and the business priorities of the company and and the 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 the, the, the rights of the players and i felt like i could help everybody and myself and the move the vision forward if I ran for president of virtual reality. Because I didn't want to work as a developer at a game company. I wanted to champion avatar, champion av avatar rights, and I wanted to find ways to interconnect virtual worlds, to connect them, and uh, to bridge them. And so I put together a crazy scheme, and this is when I met Ivan, um, mm -hmm. to run for president of virtual reality. <laughs> as, as you can see, these are some yeah, of the all posters. The art here. <laughs> from it's the campaign. part of that campaign, right? And in the art gallery that you have outside, you, you can see some of, of the art pieces that were made for that for that campaign. Um, John, uh, how are you living uh, uh, the current moment? I mean, uh, it's like some of your fights are coming back now. How, how are you living uh, all the things that are happening, all the things that are being said now, everybody's talking about the metaverse now. How, how are you living that? Well, he, he is, he, for me personally, right? I'm looking at everything that's happening. I, you know, I've made my own missteps, okay? So I, in many, in some ways I dropped the ball, fumbled the opportunity that I had as the president of virtual reality. However, at the same time, the ideas that I had to help to bridge virtual worlds, nobody else is, is actually pursuing those particular ideas. So 
I'm looking around and I'm thinking, can I help? Can I, can I help? Will my ideas work? Um, and even if I'm sort of, you know, because it's very noisy out there. There's a lot of people doing a lot of things and there's a lot of great things. We wouldn't be here today were it not for so many developers and so many visions. So there's no guarantee when one has an idea that it's actually going to be a valuable idea to the metaverse at large. Um, but, you know, that's really what I'm asking myself. And I'm actually trying to make moves to, you know, to put things out there that may help with moving this forward to the metaverse, you know, that, you know, that we all dream of. Although my dream of mm -hmm. the metaverse, most importantly, is a place. I mean, I love everything that's happening. What I really want to see is I want to see people with their avatars be able to make money by engaging in activities in virtual worlds. Not because they're creating worlds or games, because they're playing them and they're using their gaming skills to they're monetizing their gaming skills and i feel that there's there's value to the to the planet if we can achieve that and i've done it and i've seen people do it in fact i my avatar still pays a lot of my bills and so i want that opportunity for everybody on earth through the metaverse. Mm -hmm. And how people can influence on that, how people like the, those here can influence on, on, on that to happen. How are we in well, hands of big, corp only of big corporations or there is something as a community that we can do to take the, uh, everything to the path that we want to? Well, I mean, obviously, I don't know what everybody here does and if they're engaged in developing or whatever. Um, so obviously, everybody's vision is valuable. I mean, not just because I'm seeing one thing or Zuckerberg seeing another, or, everybody's ideas are relevant into building the, the metaverse into something truly diverse. I think that, you know, I would say it's not just a creator economy. When I listened to Zuckerberg announcing his plans with metaverse, the first one before he changed the name, he talked a lot about creating a creator, an economy for creators. Now, that's very valuable, right? But that's not all there is to it. I don't want, I, I, we don't, the, the, the metaverse should not just be about consumers. We don't want to look at people in our, in, in all the time and say, okay, you, you're another consumer, right? want to look at each other and say what can you what can i do for you what can you do for me what can we do together to build to make changes to to support each other and so i i would just say keep that in your mind as you're doing stuff and 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 ask yourself for example if you play a game what is this game giving back to me now that's nfts are a big step towards that because Developers are creating things that you then own, right? And you can trade, and you can you can receive them as rewards for your time. That that's a that's moving things forward. A very simple analogy is crafting and manufacturing. So, for example, for me, the big flaw in Second Life was that anybody could create their avatar, upload content, and sell their content, right? So you could sell hairstyles, you can sell clothes. All you needed to do was create the design and, and, and mass produce it. But if you look at massive multiplayer online games that have incredible, incredibly robust economies, in order to make something, you would have to find raw materials and you would trade as the, as the designer or the manufacturer, manufacturer, you would trade with hunters and gatherers 
for the resources to make your clothes. And this creates an extremely dynamic economy. It's a hunter-gatherer economy. And I think that we need to, I, you know, I, 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 that's what I want to or encourage and uh, keep an eye out for that, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, if people are asking for it, then developers will start to listen. Mm -hmm. Putting the focus uh, on corporations, how do you see the race for the metaverse? How do you see uh, Facebook, um, um, Apple, Epic, uh, how do you see their position well, towards, towards I mean, the, the construction of the metaverse? I'm grateful to Facebook <laughs> that they, mm -hmm. you know, they bought Oculus and they've invested so much and, and you know, I mean, Ivan, you're the one that has been actually <laughs> encouraging me to get the oculus and you know when as soon as i got it and we had a party here two people to away from the party and both ordered the oculus because it's reached the point where you know it, it's a no-brainer so i think that um on that front what meta is doing is invaluable i mean this is it's it's incredible and i and And I think that they're creating a landscape where other people can go, well, we need this, we need that. So that's all, all great. Of course, there is the issue of a kind of a, a monopoly and a little bit too much control. And these things are real, <laughs> okay? So um, they have implied that they want to work with a lot of other people. And I don't, I think in a way, they may open things up down the line in order to be that grand platform. Uh, again, you know, remains to be seen. So, but at the, right now, what they're doing is priceless. Um, I, they're obviously, anybody that's competing or has a different vision is what they're doing is very important, right? Um, There's so much going on right now in the blockchain with the decentralized worlds, you know, for example, Decentraland and Sandbox and other things that might be uh, appearing. They are a long way behind right now in terms of graphics and this and that. But there's still things that are happening and they're trying to create the decentralized worlds where we mm -hmm. will truly be, be, be liberated. So it's great, it's going on. It might be that those worlds will coexist with worlds in Facebook or corporate, corporate controlled worlds. There's a lot of challenges to, it, 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 it's not easy. Like for example, for me, Entropy Universe is still the greatest model for virtual reality because of the depth of avatar autonomy however it's not decentralized therefore it's not quite there it's not yet connected with 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 facebook uh, uh, and meta so we're not quite there and you know so so right now it's a lot of boring kingdoms we're in the middle ages or the dark ages but we're also at the beginning So what, what technologies do you think um, are essential uh, for a platform to adopt today in order to fully compete in the metaverse? For a platform? Um, well... Yeah, for a platform or a company or whatever you want to I call think, it. But, uh... I think the most important thing is to build, to, to build with interoperability in as much as possible. So, for example, You know, here we are, we've got graphics and art on the wall. Right now, this needs to be, these need to be NFTs, right? This needs to be from your NFT collection. So right away, this needs to be connected to the blockchain, your account, your avatar account, right away. Um, ideally, actually, to me, this space that you have, that you're building value in, should it be, Old Space VR should be on a decentralized platform. It should be on Decentraland or another one, or we create one. So 
not only are we looking at your personal property on the walls, but um, uh, that this venue is yours and you own it because you're investing in it. You know, just like if this was in the real world and, and you're starting to build up the popularity of your club, right? But you can't sell this, can you? Or maybe you no, could, but not, not in a way... I don't want for the that, moment. I'm having fun. <laughs> but, it, exactly. but I couldn't so, if I want. So the more interoperability that developers have in mind, um, and that, I think that, that means really having a great knowledge of the landscape, the better in general. Um, I think being receptive as much as possible to the ideas that other people are introducing is very key. It's, it's about consensus of reality, okay? This world that we live in exists as, as well or as poorly as, as it does, you know, because we all kind of perceive it to some extent in the same way. Maybe not in every way, not in terms of our belief systems, but reality sort of, the, the physical reality is very much very consistent. Um, and we need as much consensus throughout the metaverse with certain things in order to to create that consistent reality and that what that does in my mind the value of it because you could easily say no let's not have a lot let's keep everything different but, but what happens is if you have a consistent reality and a consensus certain things that you do certain skills are become a a, tr a, a a commodity that can be traded across the metaverse. So, for example, if it takes the same amount of work and skill to drive a car in the metaverse, then your car driving skills are going to be valuable to anybody anywhere. And so, um, that's not a good a good example. I'd, I'd rather use the example of <laughs> making clothes or something else. But, but <laughs> effectively, if we can see your skills valuable and, and consistent as a consensus of what they're worth throughout different worlds, then I think that we'll have an incredible economy that can compete with the real world and potentially um, help us overcome some of the problems that people face because of governments and local geopolitics mm -hmm. let's talk about that let's let's talk about the people's problem problems imagine this all these ideas go forward um what do you think would be the main challenges we will have to face as, as a society in the real world <laughs> or this yeah society? i mean yeah <laughs> I, assuming that this is a real world Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean the already one. the blockchain and cryptocurrencies are are triggering issues, but the world's quickly adapting. Um, but, but you know, for people in 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 certain regions, the having being able to move some of your assets into a decentralized situation is a lifesaver. Um, so, you know, if you, I th I think that. Being, if you're in a, a country with limited opportunity and all you got to do is put on your headset or whatever, something you valuable in a, to a community um, here. Hmm? in your skill. I mean, this this is very important. So you, you solve, you can solve local issues of, of opportunity through the metaverse. Um, governments are going to struggle with the fact that you know, they mm -hmm. want to tax your activity in order to run their country and you're not feeling like you want to be taxed because you're not doing it in their country. You know, you're, you're doing it in another realm. So, you know, I think that there's going to be uh, a lot of um, uh, back and forward on that. I, I mm -hmm. think that it's important to the rights of of people and, and what they feel, you know, their, their, their position is. So... Um, there's going to be upheaval, but, but it's kind of interesting, exciting. Mm -hmm. Is that the only ch challenge or the only uh, 
thing that governments should uh, be caring about the the taxing uh, or or what other what other things should government know, be I, thinking out i i honestly think that the government should support this as much as possible for for the issue one of the biggest reasons for me is climate issues that we have we destroy and over harvest in the real world to, to manufacture to make things to trade just because we need the economy we need to trade so we're doing so much damage simply because of the need to have an economy well governments should understand that there's that we can do all of a lot of that in virtual reality without destroying anything and therefore you know they they should give people tax credits for making money in virtual reality because it's putting less pressure on the planet that's what i would like to to, to see and argue for and you know i i actually and andrew yang was running for president in the us um <laughs> I, cha I championed him as much as possible and I met with him and I was planning because he's a very forward thinking guy. In fact, I, in one of my meetings with him, I said to him, hey, look, when you're president, I want to, um, we've got to discuss virtual reality becoming a sovereign nation. <laughs> so, and I, I would have pitched and proposed these types of uh, plans. And, and you know, so governments, Governments need people who understand this landscape to interact with them, to advise them, to set up, and then we'll have all kinds of fantastic programs and support potentially. So it doesn't always have to be a them virtual, you know, metaverse versus reality. That's no. I mean, honestly, the one thing that the pandemic, one of the things the pandemic showed me was wow how fabulous it is that we're seeing more animals in our streets how the the the, the smog had cleared in los angeles and you know uh how look how many people now are working from home i mean that's cut emissions you know to some extent or at least it did for a while um, so okay yeah mm -hmm. there's so many things okay. right Okay, I see a lot of you just um, clapping and sending emoticons. Uh, I, I think it's time, I think it might be time for opening up questions. Uh, so I'm going to use my host tools to take off the restrict audience. And I don't know if this is the right way of doing it, right? I'm very, very new to all space events. So probably I'm not doing it right. I need to do it in, in a different way. I'm going to restrict again and respond to the one that has raised the hand properly. Okay, and let me see if I can uh, mm, give it megaphone. Yeah. Javier? Hey, uh, hello? Hello, John? Hey. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can yes, we can hear you. Yeah, uh, I was uh, really uh, surprised uh, about what you said before about um, about the president of the virtual world and uh, immediately uh, just an idea pop up in my mind uh, do you have a constitution for a virtual world you know what i was working on the constitution for the virtual world but there's actually a lot of other people who've drawn up constitutions for virtual reality and i if i had gotten as far as needing to implement it i probably would have looked to those documents um to uh you know to champion to find the great stuff great anyone else have a have a question okay so let me just try to give you you are uh Sorry if I'm not uh, very quick on this, Captain. Captain, okay. So you have the megaphone now. Hey, uh, this is Armour, Ren with the 6873 show, Virtual Media. Uh, just mm -hmm. kind of curious, uh, we've been doing a lot of coverage too, also in the metaverse and stuff like that. I do know 
that we um, Meta has done a lot of advancements and stuff. Uh, but there's also Steam has a billion dollar uh, investment in building their own metaverse, which is more open source based. And there's also about three other people who are smaller companies who are actually making true open source, uh, true open source uh, metaverses. Is there anyone in particular that you would like to see take off? And could you also go into a little bit more depth about what it would be to be a virtual president what does that entail to be a virtual president like an actual government or nation inside of vr okay as far as the other platforms are concerned i mean vive and steam is obviously they have the the potential there is enormous um they're more gamer centric uh than than face meta uh so I'll, leap forward with with the quest 2 and you know not being tethered to your computer and so i think that as soon as vive make that leap as well um that'll it'll it'll really put them running um alongside each other so i think i think steam has enormous potential and maybe that's actually going to be the platform where we where we will see the first really MMO style virtual worlds uh, emerge. So very, very excited. And then I don't know specifically, you know, other than let's say the decentralized worlds and MMOs that are in development that have a lot of potential, for example, in Trophy Universe, who you know, I'm hoping will really make some huge leaps. Um, but uh, but I hope that they're connected with Steam and with with Meta as well. So, yeah. And then in terms of um, president and the value, okay, I'm not a great president. I'm I, I'm I'm too eccentric and egocentric, really. But the point of what I did was to try to raise awareness for certain issues that I felt would be very important in this next early stage and that is interoperability and when i started doing running for president nobody was talking about this nobody was worried about interoperability the metaverse was still quite a way away the, i mean literally i launched one of the first um icos with a utility token uh, called the the teleport token and and the point of it was that um that we need to have monetized assets that all worlds are using, that there's utility and value. So now what I have seen, and I'm I'm thrilled that, that, that it's happening, is everybody's talking this language, right? So we're literally everybody that's that's developing, especially in the NFT space, and is is speaking this same language. Issues are a fundamental theme. So, I mean, really, I'm ready for the next president to come along who can, who's more suited to, you know, maybe building, putting some infrastructure together. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, whether or not I manage to finally implement any one thing that becomes a standard which I do believe that some of the thoughts that I have could do that. It's very hard to get get it in, to make one thing that everybody's gonna use in all virtual worlds is, it would be an enormous accomplishment. Um, you know, just like, you know, the Oculus is an enormous accomplishment. So I don't know if I'll ever achieve it. Um, I'm ready to pass the baton on if, if anybody else thinks it's important have a president um uh you know but i'll until i'm till i'm done <laughs> right i'll just keep trying just to see if i can make a difference you know in, in, on a practical level uh, so then, encourage, I know, there was encourage a, all of you. yeah oh, no, yeah. Go ahead. yeah no right encourage other people to to, to come up with yeah no, you I, know there was I, I a to encourage them to to check out on the internet uh some of the uh, things that you did for for the campaign and uh, so you yeah, and I, 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 you know what I did do could be a good assessor a good advisor 
<laughs> for the next president. One, one of the things pay. that I did do very early on, I got caught in the, the first crypto nuclear winter. But before the crash, I did manage to build a DAP that utilized a number of different tokens. Teleportation token, uh, never die, revival token. I, I introduced a number of skill tokens so that when you did certain activities, you would be rewarded with with, you know, ERC-20 tokens for strength, stamina, and, and, and charisma, and, and it all worked. It was beautiful, but nobody really cared. They were interested in crypto kitties at the time. And I actually only built it as a proof of concept. But it did work. Even today, we're doing, you know, like teleportation is, is um, so fundamental. And the thing is, is that as I do this for free it doesn't help anybody out there if if that was just costing a fraction of a penny every time i did it and and then you uh harvesting fractions when you were doing things and then i needed them from you in order to do that man then we, we it, it's a way to connect everything i still have ideas of how i can do it i'm actually I am working on deals to do it. Whatever. Mm. There we go. Here we go. Thanks, Captain, for a question. Who has another question? Okay, we have a hand there. Warren, Miguel is gonna help me give you give you a megaphone this time. Warren, like to speak. See if it works. Hey, can you hear me, guys? Yeah. Yeah. Right. First of all, thank you, John, for your time. Um, it's great to uh, hear you and listen to you and, and, and everybody else's uh, input here. It's really good. Um, John, I'm also from, I am from the fashion industry, and I'm partly responsible, dare I say, for the last 30 years of doing up the world that we live in and feel very, very passionately about, obviously, all the opportunities that are ahead of us here. Um, I just wanted to touch on your point there. I do have a question for you. But actually, I had a meeting on Friday with um, a team who are fractioning, fractionizing carbon emissions from NFTs. And actually, they came out with an unbelievable statistic to say that one, F one NFT printed on Ethereum emits 89 kilos of carbon, which you put that into real terms, it's about an hour's flight. So there is a massive education piece here. There's a huge, a huge piece with regards to educating people, just like we've done in the real world over the last few years. Um, and, you, you know, when I hear you talking about being a president, it was one of my questions, actually, to see if you've got a manifesto. But how on earth can we do this? You know, because the metaverse as a whole thing is so huge. Potentially, it could be absolutely huge. And I'm worried about the corporates coming into any space and stamping their mark. But is there anyone, John, that could recommend that we all here kind of also look towards to kind of being the voice of, of, of the people that are going to use these types of platforms coming forward, especially if you're not going to go forward. My question to you, John, is do you think you were too early what you were doing previously? And would you reconsider that again now? Okay, thank you, by the way. So, uh, you know, it's great. And these are very important thoughts. And with regard to starting with the nft you know the carbon emissions and you know this is a real this is a real issue moving around nfts on the on the ethereum blockchain is completely impractical at this point in time and i'm what i'm hearing is i'm trying to solve these problems in projects that, that, that the discussion people in is that even the sub chains the 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 you know, uh, Polygon and this and and and, and out polka dot um, are also becoming uh, clogged up very quickly. So, ironically, it 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 makes you start to think we need to go not entirely, but in order to practically develop stuff, you almost need to develop them as database items that don't use up a, a stuff a lot of. Uh, blockchain um you know gas 
So these are solutions. I mean, right now, from my current, my current investigation, there is no way right now that we can use the blockchain to, the, the, to move around NFTs efficiently. So we have to bootstrap it. So as much as people are fighting for ideals, we have to bootstrap right now. So that's, that's that deals with that. Is there anybody specifically, I mean, okay, corp, one worried about corporations. Yeah, yeah, you got it. You do have to worry about corporations. So those questions when you're looking at developing have to be factored in, right? It, how decentralized is this? How autonomous is it? How, you know, what is this going to look like down the line? Are we going to be trapped by, by doing it this way? Um, and so, you know, or should you develop things immediately on multiple platforms so you aren't ever cornered? I, I would be considering all of those things as I'm coming up with ideas. Fashion, yeah, very interesting. Now you guys are, I mean, demand for fashion and virtual reality is uh it, it, enormous i mean look at everybody here everybody is styled i mean i'm i was not that creative but everybody has is exp you i can kind of imagine who you are because of what you're wearing it's so important in the early days of entropia entropia really was one of the most important pioneers of monetized virtual assets People were paying 20 bucks for a pair of jeans and $50 and $1,000 for a coat and things like that. Um, and so scarcity was controlled by, you know, whatever, the limited editions or by the resources that needed for manufacturing. So I would really encourage you, as you're doing your thing, to investigate how you can utilize a hunter-gatherer economy to more deeply engage people in the value of your virtual item, not just by limited edition. So, you know, and again, maybe you can do that on certain platforms and not on others, and, you know. Um, and as far as finding another person to champion, I mean, there are some great minds out there. I, I'm, I, I, I'm not very politically inclined, so like when I read Constitution, <laughs> I mean, it's a lot of work for me to write up a constitution and stuff like that. Um, you know, I, uh, so, but I, I, if I succeed in anything, I'm not adverse to continuing, but I'm just saying there are, I, I just feel like, you know, um, you know, Never Die is a character I created. He's like, a, he, he's, a, <laughs> he's, he, yeah, I'm, I'm an ent I'm a performer. So I guess there have been some performer presidents. <laughs> but, uh, no. I mean, hey, I'm available to try to help right now as much as I can, if if I can. <laughs> so um, I, mean, I, I, I am. I'm trying. I'm trying. So if if I'm needed, I'm available. If you, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's a, okay. it's a great. It's a great answer. Great answer, John. I think you know. At, well, at the end of the day, it is. It is just. It's trying to to educate people, as I say. You know, that's that's the challenge that we all live with, unfortunately. But, um, and and, and I, being I, I really a respect it. golden era, it's so early. This is where things get worked out, right? Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to just there's a, an analogy in the early days of cinema film in 1910s. You know that era. There were so many different. Um, platforms for watching films little kinescopes and this and and then there were tons so everyone everybody had their own um uh, uh, uh technology for watching movies and so it wasn't until you know the big picture houses where the you know that were popular to watch an event there was a problem with the film stock because it kept slipping so you'd be sitting watching a movie and then suddenly it would slip and you you know like fast forward and it was a mess and somebody invented and i guess patented maybe something called the three the three sprocket strip 
and that enabled the projectors to um to properly grip the film stock and then that became standard because it solved the problem of slippage and it enabled lots of theaters to open up all over the country and the projectors all use this same three sprocket technology and then all the film stock developers to use this three sprocket technology and that universe uni on the industry and it reduced you know the costs of everything else in terms of distribu distributing and uh and that's what's gonna that's what we're we're looking for now that's what's going to happen is we're going to solve a simple problem and that will then bring everybody to certain standards that'll then you know help so um mm -hmm. thanks for thanks for question uh we have time for a couple of more questions before going to have some drinks at the bar uh i don't know if dj master wanted to was just doing like this. I don't know if he was just saying hi or do you have a question yourself? No. Okay. Anyone has a question? If you don't have more questions, we can just go uh, to the bar and uh, speak to each other freely. Uh, okay. I don't see any more hands raised. Thank you so much, John, for coming out to, to the verse the way um, Thank you, show him some some love yeah that's that's great uh, it, it was great to be your master in this transition to the headset to the oculus headset and uh, it's another memory a good memory to remember um, it was also great to have you all here I'm gonna unmute you all um, we just started one week ago and I don't know how longer we're gonna Keep on doing this, but as far as far as it's fun and you are participating, um, we can be there forever. That's what what we feel. Um, please feel free to give us feedback. Uh, we have a web website midverse.org. Um, we'll be posting our events here, um, and um, well, just uh, we are easy to find. So keep on coming to our events. Keep on talking to us, suggesting new topics, new people. I'll try to bring as many interesting people as possible. And I hope to meet some of you in person now in the bar. Thanks for coming. I'm Thanks, Ivan. Just Fantastic. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you so much. To be here. Hmm?